Today on Two Guys in a Ride, we're going to review the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder, and this is the SV trim level. I'll tell you about the horsepower, cargo, dimensions, and safety. And I'll tell you about the interior, the controls, and all the technology. But before we get started, take a moment, click that subscribe button down below, and hit that bell notification up above so you never miss one of our videos. That's right. So what do you say, Nate? Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. Today, we're working with our friends at Mankato Nissan in Mankato, Minnesota. 35 years after the launch of the original, Pathfinder has returned to its rugged roots, loaded with the benefit of everything learned along the way. The 2022 Pathfinder is all new from the ground up. Every inch of the vehicle has carefully been designed to convey a sense of strength and capability with a strong front face, wide stance, blister fenders, and a shorter front overhang. Nissan tells us that today's large SUV owners want a vehicle that conveys strength and rugged capability while using advanced safety and technology features to keep their families safe and comfortable during everyday adventures. And the all-new Pathfinder is ready to take on those adventures. The 2022 Nissan Pathfinder is available in four trim levels, starting with the S at $35,310, the SV at $38,200, the SL at $41,490, and the Platinum starts at $48,090. Now, these are the starting prices for the four-wheel drive versions. The same trim levels are available in two-wheel drive as well for about $1,900 less per trim level. Now this is the Nissan Pathfinder SV four-wheel drive and it's presented here in gun metallic and it has a charcoal cloth interior and its MSRP is $40,110. Now it is powered by a 3.5 liter gas direct injection, double overhead cam, naturally aspirated V6, producing 284 horsepower at 6,400 RPM and 259 pound-foot of torque at 4,900 RPM. It's also driven by a nine-speed automatic transmission with seven position drive and terrain mode selector. And this Pathfinder does have intelligent four-wheel drive. In fact, the four-wheel drive models are equipped with a new direct coupling system that allows immediate response and requires no wheel slippage at all to engage the system. Now, out front, I really do like the full, I've got a loud squawker up here in the trees, really do like the full C-shaped LED automatic on, off, low and high beam headlights, and they are LED daytime running lights. And I like that black, matte black three slot grill with the chrome V surround sound. Now that three notch design on top does recall the first generation Pathfinder and I like that they harken back to their heritage. It does have a body colored front bumper and there is a matte black, I have a heckler, there is a matte black lower chin spoiler as well. Up top there is a broad flat hood and above that is an acoustic laminated windshield with speed sensitive variable intermittent wipers. Shh, go away bird. He's throwing me off. <laughs> Let's take a look around the side. Now these are 18 inch painted alloy wheels and they are wrapped in 255-60R18 all season tires. And I want to take just a moment to explain to you what those numbers on your tires actually mean. Well, the first letter in the code tells you what class of tire it is. P stands for passenger vehicle tire. Uh, so a P-class tires would include cars SUVs, crossovers, minivans, and well, smaller pickup trucks as well. LT means light truck tire, which is designed for vehicles that can carry heavier loads, towing trailers, or for those looking for a little extra heavy duty option. Then of course, if you see ST, well that stands for special trailer. These tire sizes are meant for trailers, including fifth wheels and other travel trailers, as well as boat, and utility trailers. If there's no letter before the first number, you have a metric or European tire. 
Now, the three digit number following the letter is the tire's width from side to side as you're looking straight at the tire head on in millimeters. Then the forward slash separates the tire width number from the two digit aspect ratio. The bigger the aspect ratio, the higher or taller the tire sidewall is. It's the height of the sidewall measured from rim here to the top of the tread and it's expressed as a percentage of the tire width. So in this example, the aspect ratio is 60, meaning the sidewall is 60% as high as the tire is wide. That's the aspect ratio. After that, the letter tells you about the internal construction of that tire. R, well, it's a radial tire. D, much older construction, but it is a bias ply or a bias constructed tire. Next, there is the wheel diameter. This two digit number, well, that specifies the wheel's diameter in inches. It's the distance between the two bead seat areas. So basically from here to the other side on the rim. Next, there's the load index. The two digit or three digit number that follows the gap specifies, specifies tire load index. The load index symbol indicates how much weight a tire can support. Now after that, there is the speed rating. The last letter is the tire speed rating. This indicates the top speed it's safe to travel at for a sustained amount of tire. A tire with a higher speed rating can handle heat better and provide more control at faster speeds. But, but please don't try that out on your own, okay, please. <laughs> Anyway, okay, I know there was a lot of information, so if you missed any of it and you're curious about what those numbers actually mean, you can hit rewind, the little button down there, or you can read the information that I've posted in the description below this video. Now, let's talk about the actual back to the uh, Pathfinder and about its new design and look. Well, on the new Pathfinder, the front suspension features an updated mount system helping increase body roll stiffness by 28%, and the rear suspension features a multi-link design, which also then helps increase rear roll stiffness by 14%. Now, the front suspension is independent struts with 29 millimeter solid stabilizer bar, and the rear suspension is independent multi-link with twin tube dual path shocks, and it has a 28.6 millimeter hollow stabilizer bar. It does have four wheel disc brakes with four wheel ABS with 13.7 inch front vented and 12.99 inch rear vented brake disc. It also does have a rack mounted full electric dual pinion vehicle speed sensitive power assisted steering. And the Pathfinder rides on a reinforced unibody construction like most crossovers are built these days. Now, I really do like this matte black wheel well trim and rocker paddle trim, and I'm really digging, digging these blistered fenders front and back. Really cool looking. Now, these are body colored manual folding outside rear view mirrors with integrated turn signal indicators, and I do like the body colored door handles, and you can see it does have the little uh, touch lock and unlock sensor there as well. Now this does have the chrome belt line trim, but it does have black window uh, trim. And up top there, you see the uh, gloss black roof rack, but on this particular Pathfinder, there is no sunroof. Okay, out back, you do see there is the body colored rear wing deflector, and it does have the integrated LED high mount third brake light. Now this is a fixed rear window with fixed interval wiper, and it does have a defroster. Unfortunately, Nissan decided to keep the wiper located here at the base of the window instead of maybe making it a sharper look back here and a cleaner look if they had been able to tuck it up under the wind deflector. Uh, I think it really tidied up this good looking rear end. Now, these are full LED tail lights and you see the Nissan logo right in the middle and I really do like Pathfinder spelled out in brushed chrome letters, block letters across the tailgate panel. And I really do like the squared off rear tailgate opening and there is also then a body colored rear bumper with matte black rub strip fascia and you see the reflectors and parking sensors 
and tucked up under that bumper is a single exhaust and as well tucked up under the body is the spare tire now speaking of squared off tailgate let's open it up and take a look at the cargo area now this is a manual lift tailgate but the powered tailgate is an option on the sv trim and it does come standard on the platinum trim now the rear second row seats are split 40 20 40 and the third row seats are split 60 40 with manual folding and manual recline now located up under the cargo floor is a new easy to clean luggage box offering 54.1 liters of storage and max cargo behind the front row with all the seats folded is 80.5 cubic feet max cargo behind the second row with the third row seats folded is 45 cubic feet and max cargo volume behind the third row with all seats upright and in place is 16.6 cubic feet now you know a lot of car reviews a lot of car dealers quote you cubic feet stats just like that but does that really give you any information that you can actually use well you know what <laughs> we don't just talk twinkies and jars of costco mayo here nope we give you the actual cargo area dimensions so you'll know before you buy it if that new flat screen tv tv jumbo pack of paper towels or storage totes will fit nicely in the back so, so here we go cargo floor length with the seats folded down to the front row is 79.8 inches cargo floor length with the uh, second row seats up is 45.5 inches to the rear sill and cargo floor length with the third row up is 19 inches to the rear sill cargo width at the belt line is 58 and a half inches in fact nissan says the four foot wide cargo area allows room for four golf bags six tsa sized suitcases or a 120 quart cooler with the second and third row seats up and in place so cargo width between those wheelhouses is 51 inches cargo opening height floor to ceiling is 33.3 inches and liftover height which is getting something off the ground and into the vehicle is a relatively low 31.7 inches so what about some of the safety systems on the pathfinder well you've got blind spot warning rear cross traffic alert automatic emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection you also have rear automatic braking which i absolutely love and it has intelligent forward uh, collision <laughs> warning and there's also lane departure warning blind spot intervention intelligent lane intervention traffic sign recognition and intelligent cruise control with full speed range and hold and so very much more these things are loaded with safety and some of the packages that are available on the pathfinder there's a cargo package an sv black package and an sv premium package so check with your nissan dealer about those specific packages next up let's talk about the dimensions okay front track 66.9 inches rear track 66 .9 inches overall width with the mirrors folded in is 77.9 inches overall length tip to stern 197 inches total height 70.9 inches and it rides on a wheelbase of 114.2 inches now it does have a minimum ground clearance of 7.1 inches and a nice approach angle of 16.1 degrees it has a departure angle of 15.6 degrees and it has a breakover or ramp angle if you will of 20.9 degrees now its overall curb weight 4484 pounds and it does have a maximum payload of 1416 pounds now its standard towing is 3500 pounds but when properly equipped can tow up to 6000 pounds it does have a turning circle of 38.7 feet and its fuel capacity is 18 and a half gallons so how safe is the new pathfinder well iihs nor national highway transportation safety administration at the time of this filming have had a chance to rate its crash worthiness so performance 0 to 60 7.2 seconds 
standing quarter mile 15.4 seconds at 90 miles an hour and it does have a top speed of 140 miles an hour. So what do you think about its appearance? What do I think about its appearance? Well, I like the strong front face, the wide stance, and I love those blister fenders that convey a sense of strength and capability. Exactly what Nissan wanted, and I think they nailed it. Warranty. Basic warranty, three years, 36,000 miles, and it does have a powertrain warranty of five years and 60,000 miles. It does have also roadside assistance for three years, 36,000 miles as well. What about its economy? Well, 21 SETI, 27 highway, and 23 combined, and it has a, it emits 7.6 tons of CO2 emissions at 15,000 miles a year driven. So now let's take a look inside, but before we do, make sure to check out my notes in the description down below, and please take a moment, give us a like, leave a comment, and please, Click on that subscribe button right over there. All right, Nate, what do you say? Show the folks inside. Take it away. Now, stepping on the inside here, the first thing I notice are the, it's a nice storage area down here below where you've got a bottle holder right down here. It's nice, large size, and then you've got ample storage behind that. All right, so up here, you do have auto up and down all four windows. You've got your window lockout button and then you have, uh, your, of course, your left and right mirror selector, your cursor controls, and then your unlock and lock buttons. And then, of course, your grab handle up here and one of your six speakers in the door. Now, the driver's seat is a 10-way power, including a two-position lumbar, and that will just mean that this part here comes out, and then that's one way, and then goes in. That's the second way. It doesn't adjust up and down. Now, why would you care if a seat had lumbar? Well, if you've never had one before, it makes driving, especially for distances, much more comfortable. Down here, you have got, of course, your foot pedals, and then you do have a really large left foot rest. And then underneath here, you have one of my favorite things, and that's just extra storage. There are Coming up here, you do have your brightness and thinness controls for the dashboard, and then of course you have your steering assist button right there, as well as some of your vent controls, which has some of that shiny black plastic around it. All right, let's step in. All right, this is a push start. That button's right here in the dashboard. And I love the animated gauges, and you can turn those on and off. So, uh, on, on the left here, you've got an analog tack and fuel temperature gauge. On the right, you have got an uh, analog speedometer and, f and fuel gauge. And then in the middle, you have your digital driver's information screen. Uh, if you want to see a video on all the information that's contained in there, as well as the infotainment screen, click on the link above. We've created a separate video for that. Now, coming back to the steering wheel, it is a tilt and telescope, and that is manual, and the lever is underneath here to adjust that. On the far left of the steering wheel, you do have your controls right here for the driver's information screen, and then you've got media buttons here. Over on the far right, you have got your um, ProPilot Plus, which is your cruise control, as well as some safety systems, and then your resume, uh, set, and cancel, your voice command, which this car does have a uh, pass-through, so if you push and hold, it'll go to Siri or Google Assistant, depending on your type of phone. You also have a phone button here, and then your gap setting for your uh, cruise control. Now, this particular vehicle has full-speed dynamic cruise control with traffic stop and go. You do have paddle shifters back here, and I'll show you the manual mode in a minute, uh, but that's how you're gonna shift manually. Uh, over here, you've got your auto light switch as well as your turn signals, and then over here, you've got your windshield wipers. Now, uh, moving over to the infotainment screen area, this is an eight inch screen. It's got six speakers. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM and FM radio, HD radio. Um, it does, and Bluetooth. Um, if you use the Nissan Connect app, you can also uh, control some things of your vehicle like auto start and windows up and down from Alexa. I do like that they have lots of physical buttons in here. All right, uh, moving down, of course, you got your air vent controls. You got the hazard nice and prominent in the middle, which I like. And then down here, uh, Nissan 
who says that this is a dual zone auto climate control and then lists the rear controls as separate. So, but it, quite essentially, this is a tri-zone climate control. Uh, so what I like about it, I mean, all the buttons are, are basic here. You can see those. But what I like about it is that the sync button is physical. In fact, nowhere in the infotainment screen do the climate controls even show up. This does have three stage heated seats on both sides for the front. All right, moving down below, you do have two USB ports down here. You have a USB-C and a USB-A. Both can be used for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. In addition to that, you do have a 12 volt plug-in and then a nice storage area. In this particular vehicle, that is not a wireless charger. Now, the shift control here is right here. I do like it that it's a physical shift knob and, and not a rotary one. The push button to, to shift is on the left side, and park is a physical push button. Now, I said I'd show you how to get between drive and manual, so if I put my foot on the brake and I just tap it down, it goes to drive. If I tap it one more time, nothing changes here, but on the dashboard, it's going to shift into manual, and it's going to show you gear number one. If you want to get back from manual to drive, it's, an, it's a, another push down. You would think it would be up, but it is another push down. All right, and again, park is just a physical button. You do have a shallow tray right here. Uh, for storage, you have two cup holders. They're very nice size. They're fairly deep with a removable rubber bottom that you can clean. Your auto start stop defeat button is right here. So you can turn that feature off if you don't like the engine stopping when you're in a traffic light or something. You do have a physical uh, parking brake button, and then you have an auto hold. Right below that, you have your all of your drive modes as well as your hill descent control. Drive modes are sand, mud and rut, snow, auto, so it'll turn to whatever it thinks it needs, eco, sport, and then tow. Okay. Hill descent control, what that does is if you're going down a steep hill, it'll automatically gear your truck down so that it, it's doesn't it's not just kind of like cruising down a hill in neutral. It helps to brake the car using, uh, using the engine. Now, right behind that, I do like the fact that the Pathfinder name is written right on the center armrest. I think that's a nice touch. If I open that up, underneath here, you could have a couple of things. First of all, you got what I would call a coin storage tray. You could also set your key in there. And then it's just a nice deep box uh, that you could, man, I mean, that's like a good eight inches deep. And then in the lid itself, you've got a pen holder and then a place to hold perhaps your insurance cards or something like that right in here. But nice that they put those little extra touches in there. Now, I do like this little tray area that's right in here. It's kind of hidden with the gray colors, but it's, I mean, my, you can see how far my hand is. I mean, that's fairly deep, right? So I, I like that. The glove compartment itself, if I open that up, okay, is adequate. It's not super deep, um, but it'll certainly hold all of your manuals and a few more things. Coming up to the mirror, this is a standard mirror with the day-night switch right here. You've got an airbag, um, you've got a passenger airbag indicator, whether it's on or off, because it senses if something heavy enough is sitting in the seat to turn it on. You do have sunglass storage right here. And you do have your lights right here, which you can turn on separately. You can turn on all the lights here if you want. Uh, and then up here, you have your SOS button. This is part of the Nissan Connect. You get that free for six months, and then that particular part of the Nissan Connect is about $8 a month. That's a safety feature you'll want to think about. All right, so the visors right here are backlit. They've got a mirror, a light at the top here. They've got a mirror and they of course are telescoping and each side does have a nice grab handle. Okay, that's it for the front. Now we're gonna take a step into the second row, right? All right, stepping in the second row, uh, you have got, of course, your power window switch. You've got two cup holders right in the door, so that's nice. You've got a third bottle storage area down here in the pocket, and then a little bit more storage area. Could be for a second uh, bottle of something or just a little bit of storage area. Okay, both of the uh, backs of the seats have mat pockets, which is always just really handy for stuffing little things into. 
right, so sitting in the back here, I've got the seat uh, all the way up here. I've got the driver's seat adjusted to where I would be comfortable driving it. And I still have in excess of about three inches of space. So lots of space in here, lots of space. You do have a light right here. That switch is right there. Right now it's staying on because the door's open and you've got your air vent controls right here. In the center here, you do have your, in the center here, you do have your climate controls for the second row. You got your modes and then you can turn it on or off and adjust the heat. You do have again, two USB outlets, a USB-C and a USB-A which is really, really nice. Now, the best part about the seats is the fact that you can go forward and backwards, so you can get quite a bit more room. You can see now I have got like um, six to seven inches of leg room, and I can recline quite a ways. Hey, that is so nice for second row passengers if you, if you have them, whether they're kids or, or grown-ups, that it makes driving so much more comfortable in the second row. All right, uh, now I'm gonna get out. We're gonna hop into the third row. I'll show you how to put these seats down. Yeah. All right, to fold the seat down is so easy. There is a button located on the side of each seat. And if you just simply push it, the seat not only pops up and goes forward. So, it makes it getting into the third row about as easy as you can get on a third row seat. Then you simply take the seat, whoops, oops. You might wanna to remember to put up the backrests. All right, so you just take the seat and pull it backwards, and then you can lock it in. Now, right now, I have the seat adjusted as far back as it can go. And um, I, yeah, it's my feet are, or my knees are smushed up against that side. Okay, now, um, but this can be adjusted forward and you would have more foot room. So you would have more leg room. So uh, as it, you know, as is typical in third row seats, um, you know, these are great for kids or smaller adults, but not for a longer trip. That would be uncomfortable, unless it was a smaller kid, then, then that would probably be okay. Now, as far as amenities in the back, there are no USB ports or 12 volt outlets. Um, you do have two cup holders on each side. And if need be, um, there is a 12 volt outlet in the back on this side, my side, that you could plug into and run a cord up for those people in the back. You do have air vents right here built into the roof again which is nice so each side has that and you also have the ability in the back to grab this little handle that's at the top of the seat pull that and you can recline your seat which is really nice a lot of third road uh, seats do not have that and it's nice that nissan put that in for you and you have a nice tall headrest all right coming up next we're going to take it for a ride <clears throat> Today I'm out driving the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder, and this is the SV trim level. And uh, now, in terms of getting in and out of it, well, you know, it's an SUV, and so it's raised, and we'll overlay a video, and you can see exactly uh, what that looks like. Now, in terms of uh, parking and maneuvering around town, you know, the engine's got a nice snap to it for acceleration, for getting uh, around. It's also um, you know, it's not as big as the Armada, of course. So size-wise, it's pretty easy to slip into a parking stall. And uh, you do have, on the, on the SV trim level, you do have a backup camera and front and rear parking sensors, which makes it really easy to park. Well, that's our review of the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder SV, and we appreciate you spending some time with us. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and now TikTok. And please click on that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching.